Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. This video is sponsored by Skillshare.com. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, video editing, motion graphics, and more. You can join any class, try any project, and take them anywhere, anytime. Learn, collaborate, and even teach a class of your own. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Visit the link in the description, and get your two months of Skillshare Premium Access for free. So let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. Let's call it Modern Glitch Logo Intro. As always, I am using the 1920 by 1080 resolution. But this time, I am using the 15 frames per second. Just to achieve a choppy look. The higher the frame rate, the smoother the animation will be. And I don't need the smooth frame rate for the glitch intro. Also, my duration is 10 seconds longer, and then hit OK. Now, import your logo into the project. And place it onto the timeline. Press S, to open scale. And adjust the size if you need. Now right click on it. And choose pre-compose. Let's call it logo inside. And make sure to select move all attributes into the new composition. And then hit OK. Create a new adjustment layer. And call it the glitch. Now go to the effects and the presets. And search for the wave warp effect. Apply it onto the adjustment layer. And let's adjust a few settings. First. Change wave type to noise. And then increase the wave width by 5000. Also, change the wave height to 50 for now. Let's keep the direction angle to 0 degrees. You are free to play with the wave height value. You can increase the wave height value, if you need a more glitchy look. But for me, 150 is good. Now go to the first frame, you can zoom in a little by pressing the plus key, on your keyboard. And then go to the four frames forward. Now go to edit, and click on the split layer. Select the top layer, and delete it. Here you can see, you have a small portion of the glitch effect. This is what we need actually. You can also zoom out your timeline by pressing the minus key on your keyboard. Now select the same layer, and make a duplicate of it. Now place this layer portion a few frames away from the first layer. You can also play with the setting for this layer, to get some different glitches. Make more duplicates of this adjustment layer, and change the setting for each layer. Make sure to place the layer position randomly, so it will look, somehow, real. As you can see, I am using a different setting for each layer. You should do the same. Check the animation, and see if you like it. Cool. This looks good to me. Let's create the RGB split effect. Select the logo layer, then go to the effects and the presets. Here search for the shift channels effect, and apply it onto the layer. Now select the logo layer once again. And make another two copies of it. Select the first layer, then in the shift channel setting, keep the tick red, from red. And the rest will be fall off. Select the middle layer. 
and change take red from to fall off and green to green. I am actually creating three separate channel layers, first for the red channel, the second one will be green, and third will be blue. Cool. Now your logo should look like this, but this is not the color of our logo. Let's change the blending mode for these layers. If you don't see your blending mode here, then press F4 to switch between. If your F4 key is Then right click here, go to columns, and choose modes. As well as, turn on the parents tab. We are going to need this. Now select all three layers, and change their blending mode to screen. Now the logo should appear in its original color. Cool. Select the top logo layer, and then go to the effects and the presets. Here search for the wiggle, position effect. Apply it onto the layer and the RGB split will be visible to your eyes. But the problem is, this split stays for the entire time duration, but we need it, at the time of glitch only. So go to the first frame, and then add a keyframe onto the wiggle amount. Now press U, to open keyframes. Select your keyframe, right click on it and choose toggle hold keyframe. Yes, we are using this for the first time. Go to the end position of this glitch layer, and change the wiggle amount to zero. The hold keyframe holds the keyframe, at that exact location, till the next keyframe. Meaning, the coordinates between keyframes, are ignored. You will better understand after this next step. Go to the starting position of the next glitch layer, and change this wiggle amount back to 50. At the end position, change the value to 0. See, this is creating tweening effect for these keyframes, it just changing immediately on these two keyframes. Let's do the same for the next glitch as well. You are free to choose your own settings. I am just showing you the way, the destiny is yours. Cool. Ram preview this, and your glitch animation should look like this. Cool. This looks good to me. Let's apply the same wiggle effect to the bottom layer as well. Select, wiggle position, and transform effect together. And then press Ctrl plus C, to copy it. Select the bottom layer, and make sure you are in the starting position. And then press Ctrl plus V, to paste the effect on it. Cool. The same effect has been applied to this layer as well. Now select all layers, right click on it, and choose pre-compose. Let's call it glitch logo, and then hit OK. Switch back to the project area, and it's time to import these files into the project. By the way, you can download them from the link in the description. Select the background layer, and place it below this glitch layer. Now go to the effects and presets, and this time, search for the level effect. Apply it onto the background layer. And then drag this slider to the right, to add some contrast to it. Cool. In the project window, select this glitch layer, and place it on top of all layers. Now change its blending mode to screen. Cool. This looks good to me. Let's add some computer program animation, to make this intro, more high tech. Go to the tools, and select the text tool. Now we are going to type in a 50 lines longer computer program. Just kidding, you can download this text file from the link in the description. Select all program, and then copy it, back in the project. Click in the screen, and press Ctrl, plus V, to paste it. Grab the move tool, and arrange the position of it. Please note, I am using the Arial regular font, with a text size of 10 pixels. Cool. Now again go to the effects tab and here search for the typewriter. Apply it onto the text layer, 
and now your text should start animating. But because of my playhead position, it is not starting up from the starting position. So let's open all keyframes, and drag them at the starting position. You can slow down the typing speed by increasing the keyframe distance. And then, select both keyframes, right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and easy ease them. Let's make another duplicate of this program layer. And place this copy on to the left side. For this second text, I am using the different program than before. Simple copy it, and then paste on this text layer. Select the move tool again and then slide this layer to the right a little, so that this text should start after the first text layer. Cool. Now select both layers, and press T, to open opacity. Now change the opacity value to 30%. Cool. Let's add some movement to our scene. Create a new null layer, and call it the scale. Make sure you are at the first frame, and then press S to open scale. Now add a keyframe on it. Go to the end keyframe, and change the scale value to 110%. Make sure you are the first frame, and now select all bottom layers, select this pick whip from the parent tab, and then drop it onto the scale layer. Check the animation, and your all the layers should have the scale animation. Well, I have to increase the scale value of my glitch layer. Because at the time of parenting all the layers, I wasn't at the first frame. Cool, this is fine. Now create a new adjustment layer. And make sure to place it on to the top of all layers. Let's call it lens effect. And then go to the effects and the presets. Here search for the CC lens effect. Apply it onto the layer, and now the animation should have this embarrassing look. Increase this size value by around 140 points, and now it will look better. Go to the first frame, and then add a keyframe on the size. Again, go to the end position, and change the size value to 500. Check the animation, and see if you like it. Now, create a new solid layer, and make sure to change the color to the black. Let's call it light. Then go to the tools, and select the ellipse tool. Double click on it to apply it to the layer. Change the mask to subtract. Now press F, to open feather, and increase the feather value to 440 pixels. Cool. Select all layers, and press U, double time to minimize them. Now the last step. Create a new solid layer, and call it the grid. Place it above the background layer, and then go to the effects panel. Here search for the grid effect. Apply it to the layer, and then adjust a few settings. Change the size form to, width and height sliders. Now change the width value to 100, and the height value to 100 as well. Also, change the border value to 0.5. Cool. Click on the color box, and change the color of it. I am using a blue shade color but you can choose the color according to your logo color. RAM preview this. Our animation is complete, I'll see you on this Friday. Thanks for watching this tutorial, have a good day. If you want to download pre-made templates, sound effects, and stock footage, make sure to visit the Envato Elements, you can check the link in the description. Yeah.